Introductions as tight as possible. I recognize, of course, lest I be schooled, first citizen of the city of San Fernando, my brother, my predecessor as a member of parliament, Alderman Junior Regrello. As we gather in Caribbean Airlines Skiffle Bunch Pan Yard the best pan site in Trinidad and Tobago to celebrate the launch of our San Fernando team, Mayaro team, and Penal team. Princess Town, forgive me. I'll tell you why I said Penal in a short while. I recognize the distinguished members who have spoken tonight, members of the head table, my colleagues, my loved members of cabinet that work alongside the Honorable Kazim Hussein, Camille Robinson Regis, Randall Mitchell, Senator Daniel Duki, our chairman tonight. I recognize the deputy political leader whom I call Lady Joan Yule Williams. I recognize the vice president of the Senate who has found himself all the way from Tobago and today is sitting in the Senate, welcoming him to San Fernando. Ways could be used anyhow, anytime, Honorable Senator. To the ladies and gentlemen, the warriors of local government, to the three corporations that are on deck tonight, I say to you, Three Mondays hence, we will go to the polls. Three Mondays hence, we will ask our nation to wake up, say their prayers, each and every one of us on our knees, collect God into our conscience and thought, and work our way to the polling stations taking our family members, our friends, our persons in community with sober mind and solid intended purpose to save our nation again. And I'll ask you to bear in mind tonight as you permit me the opportunity to try and fill in a little bit for our dear political leader, because ladies and gentlemen, it is not easy to be a political leader of the type that Dr. Rowley is. And permit me to tell you why. I can tell you as I testify tonight, as many of my colleagues can, Dr. Rowley will be calling you at 12 midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., he doesn't ask what you're doing. The conversation starts as you answer scampering for the phone on the first ring. You get into the business, and then at 5.30 a.m., the phone rings again. So my phone rings with a picture of Dr. Rowley coming up, a lovely, handsome picture of Dr. Rowley. And as I see that picture, I check my watch, and I realize it's a mere three hours later, and Dr. Rowley's on the phone. And I say to him, yes, Prime Minister. And he starts about that conversation. And he launches into work again. I think that the concept of sleep is lost on Dr. Rowley. And that is evidence because at 7.30 you meet him in the office. It goes to pre-meetings. You then find him in cabinet. You find him in all of the board meetings and structured meetings that the office of the prime minister arranges. He chairs the energy committee, subcommittee. That is a committee which Kamla Fassad Bissessa chaired 
for five years and three months and didn't turn up once for. He presides upon the affairs of government and then starts that cycle again. Election campaign in gear, turning up night after night, day after day, walking in the streets and turning up. Dr. Rowley is a leader that leads by example, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to say tonight, as we give him a warm San Fernando prayer, Dr. Rowley, we pray for your speedy recovery. We know that with your metabolism, by tomorrow morning, you should have had a significant recovery. And I'm confident we'll still get the call at 5 a.m. So ladies and gentlemen, let's talk tonight. Why are we here? What is local government? What does getting it done mean to us? What are the issues? What are the alternatives? Why bother to vote? Why bother to care? Trinidad and Tobago, wake up. We are going through a battle of our lives. And let me tell you the nature of the battle. And let me answer the questions I have rhetorically put. As Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago, I was called by the National Crime Agency of the United Kingdom. I was invited to London at National Crime Agency headquarters. And I met there upon my arrival Attorney General's Office for the State of New York, Combined Attorney Generals for the United States of America, Information Commissioner of the United Kingdom, FBI, Department of Justice, Crown Prosecution Services of the United Kingdom, a room filled with law enforcement and intelligence agencies, all of us sitting around a small, built gentleman with pink hair and a nose ring. That gentleman goes by the name Christopher Wiley. That gentleman produced a book published in October this year by Random House. That book published is named, and I can't quite say it lest I be bleeped out on the radio, and on television, it's called Mind F Asterix CK, Cambridge Analytica, and the Plot to Break America. And that gentleman, in the presence of his attorneys at law, on that occasion, and on another occasion, when I met him again in England, testified that Trinidad and Tobago was the center stage and birthplace of Cambridge Analytica. What does that mean for us in local government? It means that you must be aware of the campaign that is being run in this country. Because the campaign that, being run, that is being run by Kamla Passad Bisesa, the promoter, according to Wiley, insofar as she was head of government, and the UNC government promoted this, Kamla Passad Bisesa has one mission. That mission is to create doubt. Micro-targeting, stealing your web page information, causing you to get emails and phone calls saying, it's the Prime Minister calling, we want to know about you, and they tell you where to get your number, how to get your address. That kind of surveillance in the hands of the UNC then and still in the hands of the UNC now is intended to carry out one mission, create doubt, lie, pretend to lie, tell a half truth, make it up as you go. It's intended to cause and in creating doubt, the U 
UNC's rollout of campaign finds us tonight in addressing local government reform. They say to you, Seabridge not working. You just heard the airlift capacity for Caribbean Airlines. Caribbean Airlines went from losing $3 billion under the UNC to earning over half a billion dollars in one quarter. They told you, Petrotrin shut down. They're supporting workers, OWTU being trampled. Immediately upon the announcement of the preferred bidder being Petrotrin, they run to do pre-action protocol letter. They run to court against the Attorney General to say they want to stop the Petrotrin OWTU matter. They know that local government reform was a plank of development. Randall Mitchell told you about it tonight. Kazim Hussein told you about it tonight. They know that if you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, pay your fair share of property taxes, give your money to the local government bodies, you will have the money on an equal basis to fix your roads, your drains, your schools. What did they do? They ran to the court on property tax. They made sure not a cent in property tax could be calculated, let alone collected. And they ensured that local government was delayed so it couldn't be birthed to give life to a PM promise. What did they do further? They said in that cycle of local government reform, PNM says that they want to give small contractors to move garbage an opportunity coming from local government so your garbage moves, your streets are cleaned, your building developments look good. What did they do? They ran to court to put an injunction to stop that. They know that crime is an issue in Trinidad and Tobago. Crime is the number one issue in this country next to the economy. First thing they did when we said Trinidad and Tobago requires a commissioner of police, we went to the parliament, we passed an order, a selection order and a criterion order in the parliament. Whoops! Kamla Passad Bicesa arrives in the courtroom to say, no to the reform. We spent a year trying to get that sorted out. Then came the nomination for a commissioner of police and the UNC said to this country, no to Gary Griffith. How does this affect local government reform? Why are we here? Why am I telling you and reminding you of these things? Not to blame Kamla, but to tell you pay attention to what is going on. We say, let us get it done. Tonight, I will tell you what we have got done in certain core areas. I'm warning you that the intention of the UNC is just to cast doubt, to cause you to stay home. But I am confident that you will ignore that. In the same way that I testify here tonight that in my 10 years nearly of frontline politics, I have never seen the grandstand of the Savannah as filled as I saw on Sunday. And that people came out of their own volition to show their support is the same way I expect it on election day. So, why these councillors? Why local government reform? What does it mean? You have already seen the newspapers testify today that Kamla Passad Bicesa's party will demonstrate that they will pay for people to come. But what have we done that matters to you? What does amending laws have to do with you, the people? What does campaign finance reform have to do with you, the people? Let me give you three areas of what getting it done means to you, me, us, in the space of where we are. The fact 
fact is that our country can properly demonstrate fact number one. We were told that the economy was in a great state in 2015. They ran a budget the year before of $62 billion. We came into office. We discovered that we had one day left of money to run the country. We discovered that we lost 96% of our oil and gas revenue. We discovered that we had to pay $12 billion in payments immediately. We discovered hospital not paid for, offshore patrol vessel not paid for, back pay not paid for, contractor debts not paid for, Petrotrin losing $2 billion a year, Caribbean Airlines lost $3 billion. Coming into that equation, we could have done like Barbados and Jamaica, who took tough decisions. They went to the IMF. We could have taken savage decisions because economists tell you things. Economists tell you when you're doing the budget, just cut expenditure. The largest aspect of expenditure for a government is salaries and wages. Subsidies in terms of pension. Food for underprivileged. Medicine. Gasoline. When the economists tell you, well, just cut expenditure and balance the budget, when you cut, the question is, who are you cutting? And in cutting our budget down by $12 billion, we had to ensure that everybody stayed employed. And in getting it done, having employment as your number one concern, not going to the IMF, not devaluing your dollar, not dipping into your heritage and stabilization fund in a severe way, paying your back pay, paying for the vessels, paying for the fuel subsidy, buying medicine, we kept employment where it is. And in getting it done, for local government concern, we now have, as a matter of fact, one of the lowest unemployment rates under 4% in Trinidad's history. Inflation is under 1%. The job market is now on the upswing and that, ladies and gentlemen, came about by reduction of waste, mismanagement, and corruption. Because in getting it done, we created a continuation of roadways. Let me ask you a question. Everybody knows the highway to Point Fourteen. Everybody knows that one of the largest contractors in Trinidad and Tobago under the UNC was SIS otherwise known as MAMU, who collects upward of billions of dollars in contracts and the day you lose the election, packs up and goes to Panama. Did Junior Sami do that? Did Kusal do that? Did even people that we have before the courts, certain other contractors, did they pick up and leave this country? Ask yourself, why that happened. When the OAS Constructura went bankrupt and we had to save this country in terms of performance, the Prime Minister got it done by cutting up the road packages, tendering it out to local contractors who hire local employees, local equipment, spend their money in Trinidad and Tobago, and in getting that done, it means if you want to have proper roads, and proper connections, you have to allow that which has been done to continue. What does the extension of the roadway network mean? Why build a highway to Toko, to Sangre Grande, to Point Fourteen? Because every kilometer or mile of highway that you build, that you construct, not only creates employment in its construction, but it allows the creation of alternate communities. There was a time when getting from Valsain or getting from QREP 
to Port of Spain was two hours long because you had traffic lights. When there's not peak time traffic, it's seven to ten minutes. There was a time when movement in this country was constrained by where you live. And in creating the highway network, getting it done and having done it at one quarter the cost of what the UNC prices were, in saving that money, we created valuable land. Swamp land becomes residential land. Land on the side of a highway is open for commercial development, residential development. Every landowner next to a roadway becomes a landowner whose value has been improved. The billion spent on highways equals to billions in value along the highways. The billions saved in better procurement done by this government equals to money that goes to the hospitals, money that goes to pay contractor debts, money that goes to pay for school teachers, money that is paid for subsidy for LPG, for electricity, for water. The UNC does not want you to focus on these things because to us in Trinidad, we don't feel that in our pocket. So sometimes we don't appreciate how the lights are kept on or how the water keeps flowing or how our children go to school. Did you know that in Jamaica, a citizen in Jamaica has to pay for primary school education? Do you know in Jamaica that none of the public buildings are air conditioned? Do you know in Jamaica that none of the primary schools and secondary schools are air conditioned? Do you know in Jamaica that tertiary education is not funded the way we have it? It's the same in the rest of the Caribbean. But until we have to pay for that in our pockets, we take it for granted. This government kept the lights on kept the subsidy in place for LPG, kept employment in position, and that is getting it done. Bet your bottom dollar, if you remove that subsidy, tomorrow morning you'll understand what it costs you for that not to get done. When we talk about the projects in hospitals that Mrs. Robinson Regis read tonight, Point 14 Hospital, Central Block, St. James, Sangre Grande, Arima, Coover, Dago Martin, seven hospitals and centers. How many doctors are employed there? Nurses are employed there. Ward attendants are employed there. Cleaners are employed there. How many people get services there? You see, that, ladies and gentlemen, is getting it done without corruption, waste, mismanagement, because we have paid for these things. The Point 14 Hospital was not paid for. We had to bring that, as the Minister of Health tells you, under a framework agreement to get the loan. The Coover Hospital was not paid for. So the UNC is like a bunch of marauders. They enter a restaurant. They order everything on the menu. They sit down and eat the meal. They spill it on the ground. They tell you they're coming back now. They leave you on the table and they say, pay the bill. And that is people to watch Koki Eye. That is of the type that Camille Robinson Regis told you about tonight. I too saw the joke going around. In this case, it was labeled as a woman who treats you bad, leave you, gone. And then the woman come back to ask you again for love. Spend out all your money, sell your car, send away your children. Ladies and gentlemen, hospitals getting it done, hospitals in San Fernando getting it done are important in Princess Town, in Maruga. But ladies and gentlemen, let's get to one of my pet topics. How do you create a new society? Why should you give the PNM an opportunity to continue to create a new society? When are you going to feel safe in your homes? When will you leave your home, be on the outside, get a phone call from a loved one, 
and not hear them ask you as the first question, where are you? Second question, are you safe? Third question or statement, come home safely, watch your back, etc. Today we were in the parliament. Today we were passing legislation for consideration asking for people who have automatic firearms, weapons of war, grenades, missile launchers, or people who are trafficking in firearms to not have access to bail unless they could tell the court why they should get it in exceptional circumstances. You know the UNC's position on that is? No. They will not support that law. They will not support that law to lock up people found with nine automatic firearms, nine machine guns, eight machine guns, one machine gun spraying down a crowd and killing people, children, women, men, indiscriminately. Their answer to that, their issue to that is no. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you in what we have got done, why they don't want it done when it comes to law and order, anti-crime plan. The UNC talks about a crime plan, I have told you before. I understand why. A crime plan is a plan to commit crime. We talk about an anti-crime plan. And our approach to anti-crime is that you must have plant and machinery. In other words, then a place and a thing to work. You must have people inside the place to work. You must have processes such as rules, computers, systems, and then you must have law. And what I can tell you is that we have introduced all of those at once. And in envisaging a new society that feeds local government, imagine having your traffic wardens, your police, your licensing officers, in a local San Fernando, Princess Town, Mayaro, Maruga, any setting where you can have road traffic offenses be converted to tickets in the mail. Why is that important to you? How is it related to crime and local government? If you can't pay for the crime you're alleged to have done, by doing the time, because you can't get to a court to hear the charge, because it takes 10 years to get there, because you don't have a prosecutor, you don't have a judge, you have to pass through a preliminary inquiry, there's no consequence to law and order. And when you know you have 146,000 cases in the magistrate's court every year, and 104,000 of those cases are road traffic cases, what does common sense tell you to do? Not remove them. 43 magistrates in 12 courts looking at 146,000 cases, take out 104,000. 43 magistrates in 12 courts take away 26,000 preliminary inquiries. 43 magistrates in 12 courts looking at 16,000 matters, makes sense. Is that pie in the sky? No. We passed the Motor Vehicle and Road Traffic Act to cause that. We got that done. We digitized all of the motor vehicle and licensing information, cars, licenses. We got that done. We digitized the judiciary. We got that done. We did the Traffic Management Division. We got that done. We got the camera systems up and running, we got that done. We did the training, we got that done. We passed a law called payment into and out of court to allow you to pay online from your bedroom to the judiciary, we got that done. Therefore, whilst Kamala talks to you about bringing back Anil Roberts 
or bringing back Glenn Ramadassing or bringing back a ministry of justice, I can tell you they spent $400 billion in five years and three months and got none of that done. What does that mean to us? Every bit of room that a magistrate has to hear a matter means that a rape trial takes six years less. A burglary matter takes six years less. An aggravated assault takes six years less. Decriminalizing motor vehicle and road traffic makes sense. But it is decriminalizing marijuana that makes plenty sense. And I'll tell you why. The forensics division has told us that if you just stop analyzing plant-like substances under 60 grams, you're going to remove 76% of the workload. Could you imagine the forensics division spending 76% more capacity on a rape kit, on a DNA kit, on ballistics? Kamala, up, run out. Manifesto launch on Sunday, she going to legalize weed. She going to decriminalize it. Kamala, you're three years too late. I can tell you tonight as I sat down here, I got the final version of the law that I'll be taking to the cabinet for consideration to bring that law to the parliament subject to cabinet's approval in the month of November. We're not doing that for popular reasons. We're doing that because it means a rape matter moves faster. Because it is insane to lock up small men for small things because they are sometimes framed for it. You cannot put a man on remand for one joint of marijuana next to um, accused for murder, a gang leader. And in getting it done, ladies and gentlemen, what was most critical for us that matters to local government, that matters to us to getting money, you councillors, you citizens, you burgesses, what matters most to you in local government? You drain the overgrown lot with mosquitoes, the vagrant who hiding inside the bushes, the massive pothole in the road, the collapsed house because a drain underneath is causing distress like we have in Navet. The fact that you have vagrancy on the road, the fact that you share your space in untidy conditions, you, we are rendered impotent, emasculated, because we just don't have the money for local government. And if you were to return money by going after the proceeds of crime, following the money, you will therefore be able to put more money into the citizens' pockets. So let me tell you what we got done in that. First of all, plant and machinery, I told you. People, processes, and law. Those four things must be dealt with at the same time. Whether it is local government reform, whether it is criminal justice reform, whether it is the hospital. In plant and machinery, we ensured, right here in San Fernando, the UNC, I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, canceled the maintenance divisions of the judiciary. They effectively restructured them and caused them to collapse. They said, don't worry, we're going to build a judicial complex. They went out. The record shows it that the Ministry of Justice breached the Central Tenders Board Act, and they couldn't launch it. Next thing they did, they said, we'll protect the prison. They went and they spent $80 million to build a fence around a prison. They didn't construct the remand repairs. They didn't adjust the prison's environment. They did not build a single court in this country. And today they're asking you what you're doing about it. Let me tell you what we got done. We opened the children's court in two places, in Faisabad and in Port of Spain, with multiple courts sitting in there. The parliament 
is to be relocated in January to the Red House. The civil court moves from the Hall of Justice. They go to the waterfront where the Red House is, was located, where the Parliament is, and we get six zero new criminal courts. Where are you getting judges from? Well, we went to Parliament and we got it done by amending the law, so we moved from 36 judges to 72. We went to the Parliament and we moved from two masters to 14 with 10 more, so you could case manage. We went to the Parliament, we passed the criminal division, Attorney General introduced the criminal proceedings rules. So when you get to court, your matter call in on time, it is ready, your documents filed. It's not a hundred people call for nine o'clock in the morning, lining up like cattle in the court, and your matter never goes on. And when you have that courtroom, you have the people, we went and our cabinet got it done by approving an amendment to legal aid and advice, so you have people to defend you, because most trials don't start because a defense attorney is not ready. If your attorney is not ready, a competent counsel will be appointed for you and your trial starts. Where are you getting a prosecutor from? We'll tell you because we got it done. We opened DPP's office in Tobago. We are to open DPP's office in San Fernando, Gulf City. It's being built out. We are opening the DPP's office in Port of Spain, Park Street. It's being built out. Public defenders are being built out on Stanmore Avenue. All those cabinet approvals all that expenditure going on right now has been completed and done. But when you get to the environment now, obviously you understand processes. Processes are the rules to make it work. Removing preliminary inquiries so you don't wait 10 years to hear a matter to see if you have a trial. The Piaco Airport inquiry is running now on 20 years on preliminary inquiry. We are in the 20th year in the magistrate's court to see if they have a case to answer in the high court. In the United States, people jailed, come out, forfeit assets, Trinidad and Tobago receives it. I can tell you today, as Attorney General, that in December this year, we will have a civil trial in the United States, if all things are equal, where the government will for the first time be permitted to get repatriation of approximately 36 million US dollars from the Piaco Airport Inquiry. And I can tell you that my lawyers in the United States tell me for five years under the UNC, they never got a stroke of instructions from the Attorney General. We'll get that one done. Stay tuned. The money for local government. The follow the money campaign. Taking the profit out of crime in a system where you have courts, you have judges, you have processes. What makes the UNC more panicked and fair in their heart and soul than the thought of Taxman, foreign accounts, DPP, money laundering, proceeds of crime. Let me tell you the record. FATCA, which is the foreign account declaration for the United States. You remember how we had to beat the UNC into submission there? They drag it, they drag it, they went joint select, they say no, they say yes, they say no. Only when the society rebelled against them they were compelled, understanding that they had to say yes to say yes. Global Forum, which is the other 190 countries in the world, in Europe largely, and their associates. What did the UNC say to the declaration of Global Forum foreign accounts? The answer to that is what? No. When we brought the amendments to amend the Income Tax Act to allow the police to get into bank accounts, to get information, what did the UNC say? No. What did we have to do? We had to strip that bill out, take out the three-fifths majority, and pass it with a simple majority. When the gaming legislation came up, 
because in casinos you can launder money. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, Trinidad and Tobago is the only country in the world, according to the IMF, that does not have a regulated gaming industry. Let me repeat that. We are the only country in the world, according to the IMF, that does not have a regulated gaming industry. We are the only country in Global Forum, 190 countries. We are the only country in that 190 country pack that has not signed up to Global Forum. What has the UNC said to gaming legislation? No. What have they said to insurance amendments? No. What did they say to property tax to make sure it is transparent? No. What does that mean for us in San Fernando? In San Fernando, we pay 9% of the value of the property for taxes under land and building taxes. Under the property tax, you are supposed to pay 3% of the rental value per year. An average home will pay somewhere between $60 to $140 per month. Under the UNC land and building taxes, you will pay tens of thousands of dollars if you stay at 9% per month. Because it's 9% of the value of the whole property. A $2 million property, 10% is $200,000. you are looking at $190,000 divided by 12. You understand? So ladies and gentlemen, when we get to the issue of following the money, I want to tell you what we got done. We took a very powerful piece of law to the parliament. It's called the Civil Asset Forfeiture Unexplained Wealth Law. Accompanying that was the beneficial ownership. Tell us who you really own shares our law. Accompanying that is the law to treat with transparency in land ownership, the registration of title to land act, etc. And I can tell you now that the unexplained wealth order part of the law will transform Trinidad and Tobago. Why? Where does an unemployed gang leader explain his wealth from? Where does a politician living in a mansion earning $12,000 a month explain a $60 million home from? Where does a public servant earning $10,000 a month and having four and five million dollar bank accounts and large cars and homes explain that wealth from. You see, that applies across the society. And all that we ask people to do is to get sober. Sobriety is not an easy thing. I can tell you that the product of having got that done is evidence in the tax amnesty. In the tax amnesty, we netted $2.4 billion in two and a half months 1.3 billion from the energy sector and the rest from 1.1 billion from the civil society. Why? Because of explain your wealth. I can tell you that we have reported several matters to the police under explain your wealth and we expect action in a very short order. I can tell you, you know I am not one to spit in people's faces, pay attention to the news. I will come quickly now, in the few minutes I have, to tell San Fernando why you need to allow the San Fernando Corporation to continue with all PNM. For years, we heard of San Fernando having the waterfront. That was labeled all over. The waterfront was coming. You ask anybody what that means, the waterfront was going out by the wharf, filling up some land, and then you'll give that land out and people go build something there. 1.8 hectares of land was reclaimed. That was done without any planning permission. We don't know what that soil looks like. I'll tell you what we got done. Project number one, 
in the waterfront was to give to Van Og the contract which they are engaged in right now. If you go, you'll see the contract working. 3.8 hectares of land to be built. Project number two. Who knows that the wharf had a place called Plaza San Carlos? Who knows that the wharf had Plaza San Carlos? Black Cat Hotel. Railway. When we look at the four iconic buildings there, we can tell you what we got done. We have awarded the restoration by cabinet approval to Udicott, and the Cubans are on site right now. The RFPs have been closed. The awards will happen, and we will get that done by the end of this month. Project number two starts. Project number three, you heard the mayor say that our car park was thrown away, our administrative center. Where are you parking on the waterfront? Where are you parking for the largest hospital in Trinidad and in the Caribbean? That is San Fernando General. Right now you're parking in the mud. Cabinet approved the building of the San Fernando car park at the waterfront. That particular project, RFP closed, sales sealed. We are looking to close that bid start in December 2019. PTSC, project number four. Who on God's earth takes 14 acres of prime land on the calmest water in the world, in the Gulf of Paria, and puts buses to be repaired, diesel pumping into, these, into the water, and two or three mechanics? That is what we lived with in San Fernando for decades. Let me tell you what we got done. We took that 14 acres, we vested it in, Uri in Uricot, we cleared the PTSC garage. It's gone to OAS Constructura site opposite C3 Mall. I can tell you that the design build suite has been already reduced down to two contractors and the announcement will be made shortly. That was never done before. Nidco fishing port. We talk about the wharf. Where do our fisher folk go? Who monitors the people at the wharf? Who sees that contraband and people don't come in at the wharf? Currently, nobody does that effectively. I can tell you that we have awarded the contract for the building of the fishing port at the Hatter's Panyard area, and that project has been awarded and will be started this month. What happens there? Fishing location, vessels, gassing, ice facilities, Fishing Mart. Next project, project number six. The Ministry of Works site, right up, opposite the cemetery, Rudal Cemetery. That project has been vested in the HDC. We had awarded it to a Chinese firm to build 231 homes. We got a better pricing structure locally. That project, the RFP for that, will go out in November. In December, a contractor will be put on that site. 231 homes. The boardwalk facility and road widening, expansion of the highway network right around San Fernando, the pure division of the Ministry of Works has already completed their highway network consultation for their CEC clearance. And that pure program starts this year. Skinner Park, gifted in 1926, last renovated by one Errol Mahabir, may God rest his soul. If you pass at Skinner Park right now, it has been demolished, $190 million being spent in San Fernando at that location because we deserve our park. Our park is the equivalent of our cultural center, our sporting center our youth activity center, and our park is our equivalent of the San Fernando version of the Savannah. That project is already in gear, having started by getting done by planning and facilities. I can tell you the magistrate's court, that land cabinet completed and vested that land in the judiciary. The plans are at the cusp of finishing, 
the award for the magistrate's court will be done this year. I can tell you that the boardwalk facility, when the road is rewidened at the waterfront, that will allow us to have nighttime entertainment, food, businesses. All of these things, ladies and gentlemen, in a local government context mean jobs. What are we suffering in San Fernando? Underemployment, unemployment, lack of housing, lack of development. Drive along Coffee Street from the Navet Road point, straight down, or Point of Road if you want to take it, straight down to Skiffle Bunch Panyard. It has barely changed, ladies and gentlemen. That is why in getting it done, Carlton Lane is to start. Roy Joseph Extension and Community Center has been awarded already. The Embarcade improvements have been awarded already. In getting it done at the Marabella train line, we have taken people into home ownership for the first time in their lives, ladies and gentlemen, and similarly at Embarcade. So whilst the UNC may try to tell you that there is no plan, or no connection, whether it is in the laws that have been passed and done and operationalized. You remember there was a point in time where they say, anti-gang, 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 what is it going to do? Nobody's telling you on page seven of the newspaper that five alleged gang leaders are in no bail conditions facing anti-gang prosecution. Nobody tells you on page seven that when Dr. Munilal stood up in the parliament and said Dr. Rowley have an account that the thief money in, nobody said on page seven that the financial investigation branch cleared Dr. Rowley of that allegation. You see, good news don't sell. The newspapers, as I come to an end, and the UNC sometimes get tied up in a news cycle. Let me ask you this, ladies and gentlemen. You have all seen movies like Braveheart, like Gladiator, inspirational movies, The Last Mohican, Last of the Mohicans. When you see that protagonist rallying the troops, calling them to order, launching the battle cry, when you saw Mel Gibson with the face in blue and white saying, freedom! Was he doing like the UNC? Imagine the UNC on that battlefield telling you, hey, the horse dead. The men in the back starving. That ground looking like it's slippery. Boy, it raining, let like we come back the next day. We have no money afterwards. Half the flank sick. Two men looking like they're dead. The UNC's battle cry, echoed unfortunately by some elements of the media, is to tell you, be afraid, stay home, have no faith, cast doubt. That is why I reminded you of Cambridge Analytica. That is why I will tell you about one thing. It's called astroturfing. Google it. Astroturfing is where you see a campaign being run by somebody who looks like a legitimate person for the cause, but it's really being run by somebody else. It's like taking fake grass or astroturf and putting it down on the concrete and telling it that's real grass. That's like having a trade union leader stand up and tell us in the PNM that we, N-word, we must stay home because the PNM ain't do nothing for you. That, sir, is a man to be called an astroturfer. Because he is astroturfing for the UNC. And I make no apology in reminding you that Watson Duke is an astroturfer for the UNC. Remember the phrase. Google the phrase. When you see interest groups popping up with media in this election campaign, bet your bottom dollar. You know why some of our issues stay in the media as long as they have? Because when you compare it to the UNC, Every Monday morning was a new scandal, sometimes twice a week. The other day they asked us why we're talking about the prison system and how we had failed to understand the concept of grabbers and jammers. 
That is the equipment in the prisons that grabs a cell phone call or jams an outgoing cell phone call. And we told them quite simply, Minister Hines, in his usual way, corrected them in crosstalk to say, listen, you all never implemented it, but we understand you all know about grabbers and jammers. All they know about Glenn Ramadar Singh. All they know about... I'll stop there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be prepared for fake news. PNM don't have bacchanal and scandal. So what they're telling you is, hold on to a supposed sea bridge collapse which does not exist. Tell your Petrotrin car open again. They used to be supporting the union, but now they're not supporting the union, but now they're really supporting the union. So they bring out the Astro Turfer to tell you, I'm a union man, do support. Understand the nature of the people you're dealing with. Now, the only way this is going to happen in three Mondays' time is if you mobilize your crew. There are jobs on the horizon. Minister Imbert said he's seeing blue skies, we've turned the corner, but he did not have to say there's a journey still to be had. We are walking that journey. It is reasonable, having lost 96% of your revenue, to recover your steps, to make profitable enterprises. Can you imagine a trade union for the first time in this country running a commercial enterprise like Petrotrin. There will be no precedent of that type, certainly in the Caribbean, and hardly any elsewhere. And why will the UNC be mortified of that? Because workers will get, for the first time, their fair share in their, in their employee share ownership programs, and we will see prosperity. So San Fernando, all of our people, all of our corporations, there are good days ahead of us. We have heard facts tonight. We know substance. You understand astroturfers. You remember Cambridge Analytica. You understand that there are bandits and thieves at the door waiting to take your patrimony away from you. You must never allow this country to return to the hands of the UNC. And the only way that that will be stamped out is if you vote them out. And I call upon you on December 2nd, as we rise in support of the municipal corporation bodies to be populated by the PNM members, to remember that clarion call of the greatness from which we come, of the greatness which we can acclaim and aspire to, of the greatness which we will achieve. And join me in ending by saying, Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. And we shall and must prevail. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.